hang up the phone. Yes, because we're on, we're, we're on the Zoom meeting together. Hang up the phone. <laughs> oh. oh, it's been Hi. an hour. Do you see they're us? Still connecting. They're connecting to audio still, it says. They're still oh. connecting. Oh, OK. We, we, can you hear us? Yep. No, but can oh, mom and dad, can they hear us? They're still, they're still connecting to audio, it says. <laughs> Okay. Tech is so fun. Hi, Karen. It's so nice to see you. <laughs> For longer than a drive-by mom carrying thing. Yeah, know. so yeah. Karen, Karen, before you go, see that John Stillwell there? That's Roy Stillwell's son. Hey. Up over there? I, I see him up over there. Uh, that, you know, there. I, I don't know if he's up, really up, 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 up. around. I see and I can hear you. Hi, oh, Mom. Hi, Jim. Oh yay! Okay. Mom, 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 She'll do anything for us. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. That's so sweet. So, Mom, you're tilting pretty far there. I, I can't. I'm not in the picture if I sit down. There you go. Hi. Yeah. Maybe you can just keep the screen and pull it down a little. That's a hard sell, right? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. We did a thing. Okay, there's Chad's <laughs> It's all good. <laughs> they're on the laptop because the desktop uh, decided to go out of the weather right now. So ah. they're on the laptop, so it's very challenging. Hey, mom. Okay. Can, mom, can you grab the top of the screen and just pull it down a little bit? Yeah. Nice job, Marty. Perfect. You there rock. You nice. There you done. go. Nice. nice. Yeah. Thank you, Marty. Yeah. There we go. Yay. There's a beautiful Marty face. Marty, what do you what do you want us to sing today? What would be a song you and Bill would like for us to sing? Mom, did you hear that? What do you want? Yeah. Down in the valley. Down in the valley. Yeah. Okay, who knows all the words to down in the valley? Marty does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody know it? I do. <laughs> okay, mom, yeah. go for it. Down in the valley, the valley so low. Hang your head over. Hear the wind blow. I want a tune. That's good. Blow, dear. Here's a wind blow. <laughs> Hang your head over. Here's a wind blow. Yay! Now your turn. <laughs> so, Mom and Dad, I don't know if you heard me say that there's John Stillwell right there. That's Roy Stillwell's son. Hello. Where? Right here. Well, he's waving. Hi. What's your name? John. John Stillwell. John Stillwell. Oh, so happy to see you. Good to I'm see you. <laughs> we were talking a lot about his dad last week. It was really a beautiful thing to talk about all those wonderful memories of that magical Roy Stillwell and his magical fiddle, among other things. That would make the most astounding sounds. <laughs> and mom and dad, uh, John shared with us some photos that Roy Stillwell and Tim Lamont had made of some camp toilets in the woods. Did you, <laughs> did you ever? In the woods? Yeah, they yeah. were like toilet bowls that they had, where they had they were told to move. Yeah, we looked at them. 
they, they definitely looked at them. Dad showed them to me. Did they know? Did mom and dad know any background, any more background they to that story? No, they, they didn't know, did know about that. Though they did, those guys did that in secret. That was done. Oh. Well, as far as they remember, they don't. They never saw those or knew anything about them. They're <laughs> up in the woods. His place. Secret art installations. I love it. So brilliant. Hilarious. Yeah. That sounds like them already. Are you really still well, son? Yes. Yes, I am. Well, so nice to see you. Yeah, it's so great to see you. And um, and I and I mentioned last week I was we were so very honored that um, that your husband came down to uh, Portland in two thousand six, and uh, oh. we. Um, at Reed, uh, Reed College Chapel to uh, pay his, uh, you know, respects and remembrances to my, to my father. We were very, 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 very touched by that, by his words. Yeah. Wow. I got most of what you said. And you're, you're, Roy was your father. Yes. And um, in 2006, um, Roy passed away. And uh, Bill came down from Seattle all the way to Portland and, um, and uh, said a few words in the Reed, Reed College Chapel um, oh, yes. talking about Roy oh, and right now, remembrances. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, Roy was a unique person in so many ways. Yeah. Really. We were lucky to be with him. Yeah, yeah he really was. Um, we had a lot of adventures with Ray over the years. Well, he was fun. He was so much fun. Yeah. And I loved the violin, of course. We had a great picture of her and him. Uh, I don't know who it is. We tried to find it. I've been playing the violin and beside Karen when she was damper. And Karen looking up at Roy. Uh, with a very pleasing expression on his face, but we were pleasing to him. Great picture. So Karen really liked Roy's music. Oh. So the, we, I, we used to have those short sleeve sweatshirts. Right. And I had my arms pulled in like this, so my hands were like this, and I was <laughs> trying to play the violin. <laughs> That's hilarious. Those were the yeah. most ridiculous sweatshirts. What you, they were too hot or too cold. There was never a like strange. Your no, arms I love those. <laughs> I love those. <laughs> it was magical. Just it was magical. The toilets were pretty magical too. The toilets were really magical also. The toilets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> magical toilets <laughs> the art in the wood. Oh, I'm so glad you showed those pictures. <laughs> they were. Lost in this conversation. <laughs> it's all good, you know. This is for fun and visiting too. We don't always have to sing every minute. No. This is great. <laughs> it is for camp reminiscing too and for yes. recording old Thank stories goodness. mom and dad what are some of the songs you remember roy playing commode art oh. he had so much magic in that violin he could play anything so i don't remember You know, um, there is one piece that I um, that was such an iconic part of our growing up because it was it was played at practically every um, occasion, and um, I I'd, I'd be happy to try to play it for you. It is after ten o'clock. It's, it's like ten thirty here, and I have a neighbor upstairs, an elderly lady who's gone to bed. But I I could play it with my um, hotel mute, and it, perhaps you could still hear it. If you want to try it, yeah, yeah. sure. I'll try it's not it. too. I could, I, could, I could try. I have my cello here, so. Yeah. So. Oh, look at that! This is um, I was saying to Tom Shipley in all, um, 
So we say, um, modesty, I am but a, a, like a redshift twinkle from a primordial fragment from the big bang of what Roy's musicianship was. <laughs> but <laughs> but, um, but anyway, it's, um, this is an old tune. I, I'm sure you'll recognize this if I play it. I hope it's loud enough. If it isn't, start shaking your head and maybe I can make it a little louder, okay? Not loud enough. Not loud enough. No. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna then I'm just gonna what 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 the heck? Just let it fly. Taking it off. Okay. That's probably <laughs> Turkey in the straw. Yeah. Actually, that's Irish, Irish washerwoman. Woman. Turkey oh, in the straw is, is a little different. Oh, okay, that's, yeah, right. that's okay. The other one. The other one. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Every single dance ever since the dawn of time. Every time, I yeah. I, if, we, if we have another, um, I'd be happy to play others louder if we have another uh, session sometime. I, I don't know. I didn't want to overstay my welcome, but. Uh. <laughs> It's great. It's great. Yeah, it's so great to hear. Tell us about your instrument. Is it a modern instrument or an ancient instrument or what? It's it's not. It's a it's a student's instrument, and um, I um I I inherited it basically from um, from a student of um, the teacher who taught all my my mother and uh, my aunt's music. His name was uh, um, Sorensen, um, and um, Anyway, I had a I had a Belgian teacher actually from Liège um, sure. when I in Portland. He was a, a colleague of Roy's, and um, he was from the tough love uh, <laughs> Belgian school. <laughs> and um, but he did have a good sense of humor. We were in the fine arts building in um, Portland yeah. e every time, and um, you know sometimes he'd open the windows, and sometimes we found ourselves just surrounded by sopranos who were you know, practicing these vaulting arpeggios the whole time. And one time he turned to me and he said with a very thick French accent, he said, why do they cry? Why do they cry all the time? Every day they cry. And I said, what do you mean? They cry for water. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, and then he said the French word for water, which is O. Oh, and he said, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that is so awesome. <laughs> anyway. Oh, how funny. <laughs> Cry so for what the hell? Thank you. Carla, is that a typical Belgian music joke that you hear? I, I mean, never heard it. I never heard it before. It's a good one. <laughs> but I haven't been in a building surrounded by sopranos warming up either. So no, true. I never How about you, Karen? Either. You have a song that you would like us to sing, or would you like to sing a song? No. <laughs> would you like us to sing one? Sure, sing a song and then I hear my lunch is almost ready. So I'm okay, going to then. well, we could do a group song. Oh yes. We're great at those because there's no cacophony then. Yeah, so we could do a group song. Um, we could do like green and yeller. Oh, yes. I we know must. Karen likes green and yeller. Let us do this. Do and yellow. yellow. <laughs> <Why don't you laughs> get lunch? Mom doesn't do you... want green and yeller. But no, how do you... sorry, Marty. Oh, come on, I love green and yellow. How do you do it as a group song? We, oh. just, all, we just all sing it, especially well, the. Uh, so we have given in, Karen, to the cacophony in certain circumstances. Mostly we do solos because it's less cacophonous, but occasionally we just go for it and it's very cacophonous and it's very laggy and we just go for it. Or we, we think it. Or someone does the verses and we all chime in on a cacophonous chorus. But hey, we've gotten used to it. 
Yeah. Otherwise, like if we do a solo, everybody mutes except the singer, but the other people sing, but they just have sing the microphones yeah. muted. Right. It's we're making it work. <laughs> I think it's great, but I, I I would prefer to have other people sing and not me. That okay. Yeah. Well, we'll. Are you okay with green and yellow, or do you, I like green and yellow? Okay. Or right. do you want another like <laughs> old Joe Clark or? I don't think their mic. Yeah, your microphone is not connected to that machine. Yeah. No, because yeah. your your other machine is disconnected right now. Okay. Okay. Where have you been all day, Henry, my boy? Where have you been all day, my pride and joy? In the woods, dear mother. In the woods, dear mother. Mother, be quick, I'm gonna be sick and lay me down and die. What did you do in the woods all day, Henry, my boy? What did you do in the woods all day, my pride and joy? Eight, dear mother. Eight, dear mother. Mother, be quick, I'm gonna be sick and lay me down to die. What did you eat in the woods all day, Henry, my boy? What did you eat in the woods all day, my pride and joy? Eels, dear mother. Eels, dear mother. Mother, be quick, I'm going to be sick and lay me down to die. What color was those eels, Henry, my boy? What color was those eels, my pride and joy? Here we go. Okay. Green, green and, and yellow. Green, green and yellow. I'm gonna be sick and let me down to die. <laughs> those eels was snakes, Henry, my boy. Those eels was snakes, my pride and joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dear mother, dear mother, yeah. Yeah. Dear mother. Dear mother. mother, be quick, I'm gonna be sick and lay me down to die. What color flowers would you oh, what like, Henry, my boy? What color flowers would you like? My pride and joy. Green, green and, and yellow. Green and yellow. The classics just never get old, do they? No. No. Yes. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to say goodbye since I got mom and dad on here and you guys are all wonderful. Good to see you. John, very glad to meet you wherever you are on the screen. Such a pleasure, such a pleasure to meet you. Love you, Karen. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You Thanks for coming. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Uh, I got to go to work is my problem. I, I didn't do any work over break and that's a problem. Come back tomorrow. Well, be like this. I got to see kids all day tomorrow like this. It's a soluble problem though. <laughs> Bill and Marty, your daughters are so cute. Um, <laughs> They're adorbs. We are really cute too, Corey, and all the rest of you as well. We're all cute. We're all cute, and we're all about 10 right now when we sing these songs, right? Yeah. Right. That's the fun part. It would be fun if there were more people. I wonder, I mean, I know they all have the intention of coming, but they, I they're like- a lot oh. of people tried the old link, forgot yeah, about that, it happens. If they aren't on the email, they didn't get this link probably. Mm. I put it on the- you know, Oh, you put it on the Facebook too? I did put cool. it on Facebook. Oh, well. well I'm, I'm not a Facebooky kind of gal and I got your email and I actually, Andy always emails me the link as well to make sure I get it. And I actually just texted her. To, I was to like, find out what's going on with her. Well, it is Thanksgiving weekend, yeah. sort of, for some people who did the thing the governor said not to do. So <laughs> I didn't, but hey. But it's also <laughs> nice weather on here. So many folks are just out oh, hiking yeah. the hills. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Today. It's daytime for you. Gonna yeah. ask the governor, turn loose my turkey. <laughs> Let them in. 
again. Yeah, but we love that. It's entertaining. Hold on, I'm yep. going to what try What do we to... sing now, friends? Which, anybody got a song? Oh, wait, I'm going my other device. I didn't plan anything, but I'm kind of in the mood to sing Frozen Lager. Is anyone up for yeah. that? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 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 All right, let's do it. Always makes me think of Jack. Yeah. Jack Nelson. Yeah, yeah, and then there was that time when it. when they saw it on the, well, we talked about that before in one musicale when uh, I think it was, Dad, was that you and John Dixon that pretended to saw one of the posts of the lodge during Frozen Lager? Tied a piece of wood up and sawed the wood instead and freaked Jack and Jan out because they thought you were Not Jack and Jan, Rabbit and Tai. Rabbit and Tai back in the day, yeah. yeah. I think that came up once before on one of these. Yeah, episodes. yeah I told that story last yeah. summer. Yeah. Robert Tai back in the days. When we sang Frozen Lager and you and John Dixon pretended to saw the lodge with a crosscut saw. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember sawing the lodge for uh, yeah. Frozen Lager. Remember? And it looked uh, like they were uh, sawing the. Uh, uh, <laughs> so naughty. Uh, That's yeah. got to be me. John Dixon? In our best Swedish accent. And both of us dressed up like old Swedish lagers. <laughs> and we sang the song in, in Swedish American accent. <laughs> and Rabbit was quite worried because we saw it on the camp lodge post. Then did she know that we had reinforced it with another piece of wood? So in between each, word, each verse, we would say two or three cuts with a big saw. Lim, lam, lim, lam. <laughs> it was great fun. Frozen <laughs> lager. That's the best story. Yeah, I can imagine you doing that. Okay, that's gonna Alex. be one of the greatest pranks of all time. It's one of the greatest pranks, yeah, I'm sure. Okay, Alex. Shall we? Yeah. We shall. In the Swedish American accent. <laughs> <laughs> that was Rich Carter's thing. He always did it in the yeah, sure you betcha accent. <laughs> we don't have to though. I'm, I'm going to leave that to his expertise. <laughs> As I sat down one evening within a small cafe, a 40-year-old waitress these words to me did say, I see that you are a logger and not just a common bum. For nobody but a logger stirs his coffee with his thumb. My lover was a logger. There's none like him today. If you'd put whiskey on it, he would eat a bed of hay. He never shaved his whiskers from off of his horny hide. He just pound them in with a hammer and bite them off inside. My lover came to see me upon a freezing day. He held me in a fond embrace and broke three vertebrae. He kissed me when we parted, so hardly broke my jaw. I could not speak to tell him he forgot his Mac and all. I saw my lover leaving, staggering through the snow, going gaily homeward at 48 below. 
The weather it tried to freeze, it tried its level best. At a hundred degrees below zero, he buttoned up his vest. It froze clear down to China. It froze to the stars above. At a thousand degrees below zero, it froze my logger love. They tried in vain to thaw him. And would you believe it, sir? They made him into ax blades to chop the Douglas fir. And so I lost my lover and to this cafe I come and here I wait till someone stirs his coffee with his thumb. Yeah! Yes. Nice. Bravo. Yes. Bravo. You have the Tesseract seal of approval. <laughs> that was, that was really so beautiful. great, Alex. I love it when you sing. What you got for us, Lynn or Jim or John or Marty and Bill? Anybody got something? Don't do moon shadow. Yeah. Heck moon yeah. Shadow. Heck yeah. I'm gonna go to the words so my always helpful. Yeah, always helpful. I will tell you a little joke while you're looking for the words. Um, a friend of mine in college. Uh, wrote on you know those pads we used to have on our doors for communication in colleges sometimes wrote i'm being followed by a bean salad bean salad bean salad never been able to get that earworm out of my brain since the 70s oh my God. whenever i hear the song i'm going i'm being followed by a bean salad it's like what anyway thank you for that you're Thanks welcome for making that Corey. <laughs> I, I like infecting my friends with fun filks filks I'm being followed by a moon shadow, moon shadow, moon shadow. A leaping and hopping on a moon shadow, moon shadow, moon shadow. And if I ever lose my hands, lose my plow, or lose my lands. Oh, if I ever lose my hands away. I won't have to work no more. And if I ever lose my eyes, if my colors all run dry, oh, if I ever lose my eyes away, I won't have to cry no more. Oh, I'm being followed by moon shadow moon shadow moon shadow leaping and hopping on moon shadow moon shadow moon shadow and if i ever lose my legs i won't moan and i won't beg oh if i ever lose my legs away I won't have to walk no more. And if I ever lose my mouth, all my teeth, north and south, oh, if I ever lose my mouth away, I won't have to talk. Oh, did it take long to find me? I asked the faithful light, oh, did it take long to find me? And are you going to stay the night? I'm being followed by a moon shadow, moon shadow, moon shadow. Leaping and hopping on moon shadow, moon shadow, moon shadow. Moon shadow, moon shadow, moon shadow, moon shadow. Yeah, bravo. Right. So beautiful, thank you. Oh, I love me some Cat Stevens. So awesome. good.
That was so yeah. good. I, I have to admit, I, I was telling you earlier that um, I found a big massive bag of clay that I hiked up the hill yesterday and I was playing with it all night and I put on Cat Stevens and that was my soundtrack for all last night. So thank you, oh, Lynn. Cool. Made it all come together. <laughs> Alex's mad night of creativity to Cat Stevens. What did you Stevens. make with the clay? Um, I've never really worked with clay before. I, I made a little bowl and then I started making uh, backgammon pieces. I decided I'm going to make a backgammon game. So nice. Yeah. The first thing I ever made uh, at camp was uh, what I called the caveman shot glass sequence <laughs> of uh, <laughs> caveman shot glasses, which were, of course, tiny bowls. And I made about 20 of them. And they were this, I was so excited to actually make something. I'm nine, you know, or eight or whatever. And it's, it's I, there's something so satisfying about pinching a bowl out of clay at whatever size. Okay. It's, isn't it just a, a kind of a, a, almost a holy thing? It's just, you made something out of this dirt stuff yeah. it's cool right yeah and then you you figured out a kiln you your oven is your kiln that's brilliant i want to see a picture of this uh back end and set when it's done all right well i i could do that and i actually years and years ago it, when i moved here to seattle in 97 i discovered one time i went and i hiked down to uh i was hiking in discovery park and i went way down the beach and discovered on the, on the cliff wall faces there, it was all full of clay. And so I collected a bunch and I, I made a backgammon set back then and I ended up giving it to a girlfriend who's bye bye long gone. So now I get to make a backgammon set for me and I wanted to do it from the clay down in Discovery Park. But when I was walking yesterday, Providence was right there. It just said, here's clay for you, go home and play. <laughs> It reminds me of at Sperry Peninsula, how we used to go down and get clay from the yeah. Girls Beach or the North Star Cove yeah. there. That, that clay wall. Yeah. That was there. And it was interesting clay, but we would still do stuff with it. Yeah, we they, put it in the fire. During Henderson's, they used that clay all the time. They Perhaps they bought clay some a bit, but really they mostly used that clay. Um, Those turned mostly into potlatch gifts. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, we have beads made out of it and all kinds of stuff. Oh yeah, clay beads were a big deal. Clay beads, yeah. Yep. yeah. Getting that hold just right so it doesn't scrape the string, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um. So Lynn, you sang "Moon Shadow," and that made me think of another song with moon in it. That's the "Golden Day Is Dying," and that's one that oh, Roy yay. would play too. And this may not be the end of our um, session, but it's kind of a good ending song. But I thought we could sing that. Now, well, sure. uh, anyway, yeah. mom and dad, you okay with that? Golden day is dying. Mm -hmm. Golden the, day is dying. Golden day yeah. is dying. It, I it made me think of Roy Stillwell playing that too. Yeah, on the wild end. So yeah. beautiful. And Tai yeah. leading the song too at campfires. And yeah, we could. <clears throat> We could all sing along on it too. The golden day is dying beyond the purple hill. The golden day is dying beyond the purple hill. The lark that sang at But soon above the meadow, the silver moon will swing. But soon above the meadow, the silver moon will swing. And when the wood is darkest, the very thrush will sing. And when the Yeah, 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 yeah
Amen. 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 Merrily roll along, roll along, roll along, merrily or the, or the camp meadow. Yeah, because now nowadays they don't sing them out like that anymore, but we all remember singing them out like that. We do. Every unit, so there wasn't a big crowding. Exactly. <laughs> you never wanted to be that last unit left. The last one. <laughs> Why don't they sing them out? Is there a reason? They don't have campfires anymore. They can't burn anything do, anymore. They do. They don't sing them out because they just kind of at certain point just didn't realize that that was there was like a kind of a break in the continuity of of some of the traditions. Oh, that's right. So no that campfires kind of like, anymore? Yes, they have campfires. They, well, they, they can't burn stuff though. I yeah, mean, but they have a campfire area where they all sit and they've got a stage where they, you know, do the skits and they do have no like, fire. they do have fire pits. If it, if there isn't fire ban, they have like two big, like halves of giant buoys, like big, you know, iron tubs that they have fire in. And those have a fire screen too. So they can, but when there's fire ban, they don't have fires in there. But the, no, that, you know, that in the times that we were campers or staff, we the the music department, you know, had a certain role of directing things. That at a certain point, there were music staff hired that weren't experienced with camp, especially because camp had closed for four years, and so there was like a break in the tradition. So when they started back doing stuff, they were just stuff that they didn't know, or you know, it may have been written down, yeah. but you don't always like, yeah, you know, keep everything in mind. Culture. Yeah, I remember so, that first year back in the mash tents because there was no lodge yet. Mm -hmm. We were in the mash tents, and I I kept saying to you, Carla, I kept going, "Why aren't they doing blank? Why aren't they doing blank?" And you were saying, "There's been three years." Yeah, and three or four years. Th this is brand new music stuff, and they don't know those things that we know. Yeah, and now and it's gotten back after the over time with you know alumni, um, kind of suggesting and coaching and and stuff like that so it it's gotten back but campfires yeah. haven't quite attained the pinnacle of glory that they once had <laughs> i will never forget the talking contests that mm. we used to have at the campfires right alex and i have this picture oh. on my wall it, if i ever go back to seattle which i haven't in 10 months but if i ever do there's a picture on my wall of me running a talking contest between Jack and Jan Helsel. And I'm cracking up to the extent like you can't even recognize it's me. I'm laughing so hard because Jack and Jan just were at it. And it's one of my favorite pictures and memories. I think it was from 79. Um, I love those, right? Weren't those fun? All those campfire games that we would do like talking contests and oh, good time. Yeah. Totally. And I, I don't know if your talking contests were the same as the ones we did. We call them talk offs and um... I will say I'm the reigning champion. I was never beaten. <laughs> well. Nor was I, girl. Okay, oh, it's on. It's on. Oh, wow. It's on. It's I on. coming up right now. Kim Shufrin. Kim oh. Shufrin. Oh. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. Kim. <laughs> this is Kim. Oh. Kim was our beloved nurse in about 19... 82. Okay. 82. Wow. 82, 83. Two years. Wonderful. Yay. So Yay. Nice. And look, Bill and Marty Holm are here. Really? Oh my gosh. Bill and Marty. <laughs> you are all in my heart from the beginning, from that very beginning. That was, I launched into my adulthood when I moved to um, and, and started at Camp Northwestern. I just graduated from college and that was the beginning of being an adult in the real world. Wow. But I have such good memories. Wow, <laughs> Kim, I still have two ear pierces here that you did in your apartment in uh, Wallingford. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Ever since then, with, with some kind of nurse tools, you did that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's marvelous that's marvelous well this is wonderful i'd almost forgotten i'm sorry i was i'm over here i was working away and it was like ah 
let me jump on. So I'm yeah. sorry I'm a little late. Yeah, so, sometimes we have a few more people, but uh, sometimes, you know, we have a small group like this of, of many generations mixed together. So is this a regular? Did I just catch it by chance? Uh, so, every yeah. week. We, Carl every and week. I have been here every week since March doing this, every Sunday. Oh, really? Yeah. And normally it's um, hosted by Camilla uh, Corey Streeter, who was our Vagabond counselor, Corey and me and... Uh, yeah, and she was our vagabond and counselor, Janet Harley. and some other yeah, yeah. people who are um, often here too. So some people come every month or so. Some people come every couple of months. Some people come every week. It's just whatever. It's a drop-in thing. But uh, I love it. we've been doing it every Sunday since the thing began. So really, yeah, yep, yep. And it's really kind of kept me balanced and sane to sing with people from my childhood. And young adulthood every week it's so good it's really life affirming and uh right. when there's been a real hit in the world we tend to sing uplifting songs but a couple of times we've had chapel when really tough things have happened and we've had to process we just have chapel and we read poems wow. and we do, what we need to do you know we just do the sort of camp bonding thing it's been really a gift to do this so i, I want to just understand so i can put this on my calendar for sundays at this same time yeah, yeah, Sunday, yeah. 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific. Okay, that is wonderful. And normally, is... um, normally Camilla hosted, and I think she has the same Zoom Zoom number for every time, and she yeah. couldn't do so it this time, so Facebook... I did it with a different. It's mm -hmm. in the Facebook group, the the okay. Legacy Facebook group every week posted there and and throughout. So yeah, I'm so glad. I hope you'll be dropping by. Yeah, a lot. I will. Yeah. I will. Well, like I said, just um. You know, I graduated from uh, college in 80, well, it was in between college, my, my final year, and I launched into this bold, brave opportunity all by, you know, we did, did, there was no internet, right? So I was applying for the camp nurse position from Indiana to this faraway place in, in Washington, up, you know, on island, which was such an exotic um you know, opportunity. And I said, I'll go for it. And so I communicated and I, I don't even remember who were the directors. Was it before? It was, was before. Jack and Jen Helsold. That was Jack and Jen Helsold then. Was it Jack and Jen or was um, Dave oh, wait, and Susan? Wait, wait, it, oh, what no year way. Was it? it was Dave and Susan then. Dave yeah. and Susan had just started. <laughs> yeah. So they hired me from, and I'd never met anybody. And so here I get out. Do you remember? Oh my God. I have to reminisce here. I got on a train. From, <laughs> I got on a train um, in, in Chicago or the Indiana where I was from. And my mom and dad put me on a train and I ended up and Carla, you and whoever met me at the train station. I don't remember who it was. I know you at was. the train station. Wow. I don't remember I, that, but I, I somebody met me there because this was just like it was a leap of faith, and I then became the camp nurse, and I had no idea what I was going to. I was a <laughs> new graduate nurse. I had my license, and I'd only done nur hospital nursing, and so I was bold and brave, and it was it was quite an experience. And you all, Carla, and all those that were there, I specifically remember you, Carla, because I ended up at your mom and dad's house you really welcomed me in wow and, okay um, and it just became the beginning of like a a founding um just a foundation of support and love and in another part of the world so it was just such mm. an important time for me I, I can't tell you and so to be here it's just it's just good even just just really amazing because then I don't know if I'm going to reminisce here um, because that was the year that there was that tragic accident with the, uh, oh, the lightning. lightning strike. Yeah. And I was the, I was the nurse there. Uh, wow. So that was my, yeah, my, my adventure okay. began. So anyway, and then I came back the second summer um, and then after the second summer, Nancy, there was another second nurse with oh, me, yeah, Nancy. Nancy. I don't remember her last name, remember? And I then, uh, yeah, long blonde hair. Like this, yeah. She was like all in in Norway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, then, um, and then I ended up staying and living in Seattle for the next five years. So. Wow. It was so yeah. fun when you... 
when you were the nurse and I used to come down to the nurses' quarters and hang out and chat with you and stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. But for people who weren't there that year, so the lightning strike was, uh, so they had the Mount Baker climb and uh, they were in their base camp. And in the night, a lightning storm came and struck near the camp and um, uh, no one it was- It went underground. Yeah, it went under it, the it tents. It struck a tree and then it went underground and hit all of the tents that were in a row. And the oh one God. that was closest uh, was the one that was, uh, the girls were the most injured. Yeah, I, I remember that some of those gals were in my unit and one of them, um, Susan Peters, my recollection is because she was wearing an earring. Yep. Um, it got super attracted. And I, I remember conversing with her years later. I mean, she had to relearn speech. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, she had a complete reset yeah. on her brain and had to start over. And I remember Doug, my recollection of what I was told, I mean, Doug Ironside, yeah. like literally ran down the mountain with a, a, a one leg not working. And Moira was one of my Wayfair counselors and she was up there keeping people alive with CPR. Right. Yeah, I totally Goodness. Yeah, Andy Green and, and Moira, I guess, did CPR while Doug ran down the mountain and they were able right. to, to save Susie. And like you said, she had, you know, had to rehabilitate. And um, so, yeah. So yeah. I'm, and, and so I, this is the first opportunity I've ever had to really hear any resolution. Did she recover from that? Um, I believe she did. I I would not say that she fully came back to who she was. I mean, you being in the field, you are yeah. probably understand yeah. that more than most. Um, she regained, you know, yeah, enough of wasn't to her sister, the world, but it changed her. Yes, her older sister, I believe, her name was Misha. Yeah, Misha. Misha. That's right. That's right. She was in the tent with her, I think. And what I had understood was that her head slipped off the insulite pad. Mm. And so they were all sleeping on those the old, old fashioned blue insulite pads and her head had slipped off. And I remember that she had had um, hearing loss and then um, some, yeah, you know, cognitive impairments that she did have to rehabilitate from. But didn't Misha, the sister, come back the next, I remember she came back, I think, following years. Mm -hmm. It was such a precarious time because at that time then, as the nurse, I, you know, this was like, I'd never, we'd, nobody had ever encountered this, but all these campers were coming back with this traumatic experience campers and and counselors and just the whole camp community was just I mean it was just um you know what do you do you do your best and I really remember kicking in all of my the nursing theory putting it into practice as far as trauma and and counseling and being present and um and just grounding people while the rest of the I know that Susan and Dave were handling all the other things you know, but there was a lot happening that summer. That was my first summer there. Yeah. <laughs> what what an incredible inauguration and bless your heart for what you do. And that must have been yeah. very difficult. Yeah. Um, the yeah. one other thing that, that I will say is that I, I did meet with Susan probably about three or four years afterward. And she was still working on getting cognitive um, rehab. Mm -hmm getting everything sort of realigned. And I remember she came up to visit camp and I think Misha was working there that year. And um, we were sitting in Girls Bay together and looking at the water. And I remember very specifically, uh, Susie Peters asking me, is there still salt in the ocean? Like wow. that was still stuff it's she processing. was to figure wow. out, yeah. So just a weird anecdote. Well, and it's such a, such a, you know, talk about things out of our control. This was a force of nature that really, that there was no fault. You know, there was no, it was just an experience that everybody shared. And, you know, there's no answer as to why and everybody just responded. But um, that, that was my introduction and, and, so many things that summer were just just 
I remember, I think somebody had meningitis, one of the kids oh I ended goodness. up having to send. Second Do you remember session. that? Second yeah. session. Second session. And so I had, and there was just that one communication with the doctor on the, on the island. It was just I, I had all the skills I needed to do this, but I like, wow. That was very serious also. <laughs> yeah, you got yeah. To the deep end of the pool that summer, wow. Yeah, there was, there was a lot happening that summer. It was, um, and then there was one counselor and I don't remember, who, I would never know who it was, but who was worried that she was pregnant and she contacted me. And so we had these conversations. And so I was like, you know, I was like a hub there of a grounding of where people would come to. Yeah. And um, it, it became, it was community. You know, it's was, it was, it was really community nursing, community well-being, community, you know, belonging. And I just really felt like I was, I was at the right place and I never felt beyond capacity or overwhelmed. It was just it was just an, an amazing experience. And so that was like, I think I was 20. Three. <laughs> Twenty-three. Kim, do you remember in the nurses' uh, building on the exterior of it? Uh, uh, one cap was struck by lightning. Going out, I made that. Say that again, please. On, on the nurses' building, there was a soap dish, a funny face with a tongue going yeah. out. The head. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> so cool. That is so cool. That is and and I that, have, that you know, I have a, um, from the potlatch, I, I don't remember, somebody made me an absolutely beautiful Madrona bowl. Oh. And I have that. And I think it was Tom, maybe Tom, he carved it out. And I, no. Beard, no. Mustache. Um, temper. Oh, temper. Anyway. I just have this, and, and I don't remember last names, and I have so many photographs that, of course, are in envelopes, the old way we did that, you know, but it was just, what an amazing That's experience fun. to Great launch comment. into my adulthood. That really was launching yeah. into becoming, you know, a, just an adult separated from my family into the, whatever the professional world was, into the West Coast, which I'd never, you know, I grew up in Indiana, it was just, it was amazing. Just so you all and Norwester was that for me, you know, and I never was a camper. And then when I had my daughter later here, I'm living in North Carolina for 26 years, I always wanted to get Erica to that community, you know, and it never happened, but um, because I just thought an amazing, just, it's just a remarkable experience for any of the campers or, or counselors. So just, it was just, I, I love that um, the universe brought me to you. <laughs> it's such a fun story to hear for those of us who, like Carla and I, for example, and, and Lynn and Alex, who, who were there, like Carla and I are lifers. We started when we were eight. Right. And we were campers all the way, and then we were staff, you know. And it's, so it's fun to hear the perspective of someone who came in as, an, as a young adult and it really defined their young adulthood. That's really cool. It's a different story than we mostly talk about right. in years. It's really right. cool. Right, yeah. right, so. Well, we have a little more time for some songs. If anybody, we were singing before you came, but I love the story time. That was yeah. really cool. Well, Kim, what's your favorite song that we could sing? Favorite oh, song? Um, one that, comes back regularly is all my life's a circle i was just seriously was gonna sing that today carla wait, would you do you want me to sing it because i don't know if i know all the words part. to it wait well, Kim, do you know all the words to it no yeah, it's just probably, and it's and the, awesome. to that the other one that always rings true is the wild mountain time oh we haven't done that one for a long time Either one, wow. those are my Oh, my life's a circle. I was just thinking of that because I think that's the one, <laughs> one of the ones that Susan Formo asked the music staff, Richard Carter, to lead after the lightning strike when they came back. And I wasn't there because I was oh, on wow. a big, I was on a big trip. But I remember um, that that was that song was kind of significant for it's that. It's in our old songbook, Carl. I don't know if it's in the new. Uh, I think one. it is in the. Uh, well, I have under, several songbooks under C, here. Under C for circle, not for A for all. Uh -huh. And. Uh, Okay. And it says Harry Chapin on it. <laughs> uh, circle, 26. Harry Chapin. We can do that, and we can do Wild Mountain Time. That's I, wild, that man. Is this key going to be good? Oh, 
circle my life's a circle so da, 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 da. okay so what we work. do is we let carla sing it we mute kim and we sing along loudly we sing along with, yeah everybody mute all my life's a circle sunrise and sundown the moon rolls through the night time till the daybreak comes around all my life's a circle but i can't tell you why the season's spinning around again the years keep rolling by seems like i've been here before i can't remember when but i've got this funny feeling that i'll be back once again i don't think that's the right chord no straight lines make up my life and all my roads have bends there's no clear-cut beginning and so far no dead ends all my life's a circle sunrise and sundown the moon through the night time till the daybreak comes around all my life's a circle but i can't tell you why the season's spinning round again the years keep rolling by i have found you a thousand times i guess you've done the same but then we lose each other just like a children's game but as i see you here again the thought runs through my mind our love is like a circle let's go around one more time all my life's a circle sunrise and sundown the moon rolls through the night time till the daybreak comes around But I can't tell you why the season's spinning around again. The years keep rolling by. Yay! <laughs> Most excellent and glorious. I, I've been Beautiful. aching for that. I was seriously like for three se sessions been wanting to sing that song. Thank you, really? Carla. Thank you yeah. for making me sing that because that's a song that I never sing by myself. Okay. I mean, other people sing it, but. Uh -huh. it's a nice song yeah. Beautiful. Here, how about well mountain time and then i have an audience participation one okay anyone else want to lead, lead wild mountain time <clears throat> what's the name of you, that you wild have to get mountain time. is this key okay oh the summer, the summer time is coming and the trees are sweetly Looms around the purple heather. Will you go, lassie? Will you go? And we'll all go together to pull wild mountain time all around the purple heather. Will you go, lassie? Will you go? I will be.
Beautiful. Oh my gosh. This is like just a trip back in time. And it's like a huge just embrace across the globe. I just, it, it is just, it brings such joy. I, I was not prepared for this. So thank you. Oh, Thank we're you. loving it. We're, we're yeah. loving it every week and you can too. Yeah, I will. I'll put this on my recurring calendar. I right. love it, Kim. That's the yeah. best. All right, Absolutely. audience participation time. You guys ready? Yes. Okay. All right. It's Drunken Sailor, which yeah. is, because uh, oh. uh, it's important, we haven't sung it in a long time, right after uh, Down by the Riverside and Drill You Terrier's Drill in your camp songbook. If you turn to this page, <laughs> and, um, Whoever has a verse and wants to throw one in, I'm going to wait a little second. If nobody jumps in, I'll do one. But I want you guys to jump in, unmute, and jump in on the, and then, OK? All right. And what should we do with a drunken sailor? What should we do with a drunken sailor? What should we do with a drunken sailor? Lie in the morning. Hooray, she rises, hooray, she rises, hooray, she rises, hooray, she rises, hooray, in the morning. Put him in the long boat till he's sober, put him in the long boat till he's sober, put him in the long boat till he's sober, or lie in the morning. Everybody, hooray, she rises, hooray, she rises, hooray, in the morning. Put him in this couple's little hose pipe put on it. him all over. Put up okay. the plug and wet him all over. Put up the plug and wet him all over. Lie in the morning. Get it. Ooh, yeah. Put him in the scuppers of the hose pipe on him. Put him in the scuppers of the hose pipe on him. Put him in the scuppers of the hose pipe on him early in the morning. Hooray! Heave him by the leg and a run and bowling. Heave him by the leg and a run and bowling. Heave him by the leg and a run and bowling early in the morning. Shave his belly with a rusty razor, shave his belly with a rusty razor, shave his belly with a rusty razor, or lie in the morning. Make it scrub decks with the captain's toothbrush, make it scrub decks with the captain's toothbrush, make it scrub decks with the captain's toothbrush, or lie in the morning. Put him in the bilge and make him drink it. Put him in the bilge, you're next, and make him drink it. Put him in the bilge and make him drink it or lie in the morn. Yeah! Alex, make him marry the captain's daughter. Make him marry the captain's daughter. Make him marry the captain's daughter. Her lie in the morning. Wait till he sees the captain's daughter. Wait till he sees the captain's daughter. Wait till he sees the captain's daughter. Lie in the morning. Give him a fifth and start him all over. Give him a fifth and start him all over. Give him a fifth and start him all over. Or light in the morning. Everybody, who rises? <laughs> nice guys and that is audience participation cacophony uh virtual musical style that's what we do <laughs>
Oh. Hi. <laughs> well, we didn't do right on his face with a permanent marker. <laughs> that's a, apparently that's what's in style now modern. for drunken. <clears throat> there could be a lot of verses of that song. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyone else have a song before we call it a night for those of us for whom it's night? So I'd like to know where everybody's uh, calling in from. So I'm in North Carolina. Yeah, I'm in Brussels. Yes. So happy to stay and keep in touch with you, Carla. It's marvelous. And John is our other European. John? Yeah, I'm, I'm calling from Aachen, Germany. Oh. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm yeah, on Orcas Island in in a cabin on Orcas Island, not far from Lopez or John's. I, uh, that's where I've been living since COVID. And wow. uh, yeah. Bellevue. Bellevue. Mm -hmm. I'm in Seattle. Got it. I'm in Please. Southern Oregon in Ashland. Where am I? How do you get on? Yeah, you they're in, on. You're on. You're on. They're in their same house where you were when. Wow. <laughs> I have house. such memories. We call it the house full of art. Yes. I remember when I first met um, Marty, when I met your mom, her uh, weaving the drapes, that she had woven her drapes. I'd never met anybody that had been a weaver. Oh. And and um, and I just it was it was just such a walking into a whole experience and the buttons 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 <laughs> that button um, uh, with um, Bill's um, all of the button, button blanket, collection yeah. the button blanket so so many good memories mm. yeah did you make your quilt this is my mom and dad oh, my nice. mom and dad make the quilts you I think you met my mom and dad when they visited yeah I think so because and on Facebook, you've put a lot, a lot of yeah, um, and I know that because my mom and dad met your parents, met mm. Bill and Marty, and they never forgot that we came to their house, oh, wow. and they had it was just a beautiful bringing together of, um, yeah, the mm. different ways of looking oh. at art, and so my mom and dad became really amazing quilters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, on Facebook, you've put those; it's so amazing. Mm -hmm. Bill and Marty really affected, obviously, my life growing up at camp, but also my parents became good friends with Bill and Marty, and <clears throat> my dad delivered some stuff to the North Coast tribal people that Bill sent up there, and we did some ferrying on wow. the boat my dad built of stuff for Bill to take up to, to folks on <clears throat> Vancouver Island and stuff. It was, it was fun. It was really fun to have that connection. Oh, yeah, and my parents had this boat that they would go up up around North British Columbia every summer. My dad built this boat, actually. He built it. Yeah, wow. so he's pretty cool. He's a boat builder. Yeah, and he got to know Bill and Marty, which is great. Yep. Yeah. And Carl and I were always in the same tent or teepee. Really? All the, all the wow. summers, yep. Well, in the same unit, we weren't always necessarily in the almost same. Almost always in the same, yeah. Because they the same used unit. to, we used to change tents too, like, there were yes. four weeks of camp and at least Shuffle two times we, we changed tents. And now I found out they don't change tents anymore. Yeah, they really? just forgot about the idea of changing tents. And I was like, what? That's how you know that you get all your socks out from behind your bed and stuff by yeah. changing tents. <laughs> get to know everybody. What? Yeah. Well, I just want to Okay. That's what that is. Okay, any so, other uh, songs or anything that I have? Wants? I have one more song if that's okay. It's a beautiful okay. song, and since Bill and Marty are grandparents, this is a Steve Martin song. It's called Grandmother's Song. It's about being a grandparent. <clears throat> Be courteous, kind, and forgiving. Be gentle and peaceful each day. Be warm and human and grateful, and have a good thing to say. Be thoughtful and trustful and childlike. Be witty and happy and wise. Be honest and love all your neighbors. Be obsequious, purple and clairvoyant. Be pompous, obese and eat cactus. Be dull and boring and omnipresent. Criticize things you don't know about. Be oblong and have your knees removed. Be tasteless, rude and offensive. Live in a swamp and be three-dimensional. Put a lot, <laughs> sorry. 
put a lot of chicken in your underwear, get all, <laughs> get all excited and go to a yawning festival. Yeah. Yeah. Steve Martin's beautiful <laughs> grandmother song. <laughs> he did it with a straight face because he's Steve Martin. I cracked up. One song I think we should do soon, but I don't know well enough to do it myself is uh, um, Interstate is Coming Through My Outhouse. Oh, yes. The, I love that one. Yeah, especially wonderful. pertains to the toilet photos that we saw, yeah. the toilet, <laughs> toilet in the woods photos that uh, we saw. Yeah. What's the name of the Interstate is Coming Through? Is it called the Interstate is Coming Through My Outhouse? Interstate is Coming there. Through My Outhouse. I know. I just remember the, it's always about the title in this book. They tell me I'm on there right oh, away. Okay. I'll sell today and I'll get rich with Pat Lynn at the highway ditch. I'm making my last visit there today. I love that song. You know, inspired inspired by the ballads, the Irish ballads last week, I had promised to um, perform um, Black is the Color. I'm not there yeah. yet. Oh, okay. I'm not there yet. Okay. But I, I wanted to say I, was, I, I had to laugh this morning because I was trying to find a voice, the proper voice. And I kept on putting more and more energy into the song. And um, I discovered at a certain point I was laughing out loud because at some point it didn't sound like Elton John. It sounded more like um, Bill Lamont's version of um, Blood on the Saddle. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll look forward to that. I want to hear that. And we could do Blood on the Saddle, too. We've done it before in this group. They don't do that you know, today in camp, but... We are the and, geezers. We remember it. And do you know that that's a true story? Blood on the saddle. It is a true story. And they lived. He the survived. Yeah. He survived. Yeah. Well, what is the story? I don't know it. The cowboy was just really he bloodied was up by up. the bronco. He oh. was thrown and smushed by the bronco, but he survived. I've got a newspaper article about it <laughs> around here somewhere. Oh, in my in my view, no one could sing that song with quite as much. Um, you know, blood curdling drama <laughs> as Bill Lamont. <laughs> oh my gosh, he really, yeah, it, we were all just vomiting by the end. It was wonderful. <laughs> Here it is. Oops. Yeah, it's an article. <laughs> Thank God. You would have that right available, Carla. Well, That's amazing. I think it, it was probably, it was either like Lyle Summers who gave us this. Wait, there's writing on the back of it. What? Oh, no, that's a letter that I somehow got mixed in with it. Wow. Anyway. I love yeah. that. The Heritage Room, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, now you have to sing Blood on the Saddle, Ms. Oh, no, wait. Are we going to hit, wait, what, somebody else was talking about sing, singing something else. Corey was going to sing Interstate is Coming Through My Outhouse. Well, I can't find it. In, I have almost all the words in my head, but I can't find it in my songbook. So I'm going to have to look that up for next time. Sorry. Next week. So should but we do Blood on the blood Saddle? On the <laughs> it's Blood on the Saddle, our almost ending song. Then maybe someone can think of something nice to sing after this. <laughs> oh my I goodness. I have to watch in five minutes, so. Okay. Or John, oh. you could sing Blood on the Saddle. I, don't want to get that. I could, I could try if you, are you, are you guys okay with what I don't want to get that? I'm sorry, I didn't know what I was doing. No, it's okay, Mom. You're doing great. You're doing great. Oh, you're doing great, Marty. And you John, the whole time. John, do you know all the words to "Blood on the Saddle"? I think I do. If you, if you help me, uh, I'll right. okay. give me a cue, sir. Yeah. There was no. There was blood. Uh, there was. The... Which key do you go? Would you what? recommend? There was blood. Is that too low? I'll try to do it like Bill Lamont used to okay, do. Okay. There was blood on the saddle. <laughs> and blood on the on the round. And a great big puddle of blood on the ground. <laughs> the cowboy lay in it. All covered with red, <laughs> his bronco fell on him and mashed in his head. <laughs> well, how can I get that on? There was oh, oh, yeah. pity the cowboy, all covered with gore. Yeah. He ain't gonna be riding no broncos no more. <laughs> 
<laughs> there was blood on the saddle, blood all around, and a great big puddle of blood on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was wonderful. Fantastic. What a good rendition of that. Yeah, that was good. You know, Roy could do a pretty good blood on the saddle, too. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. That was great. Well, should we have one more song if someone has a nice ending song? <laughs> Anything. <but that. laughs> Otherwise, we'll have bad dreams about bronc riding. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, we need a good one. I don't know why, but in my head is Land of Odin. <gasps> yeah. All nice. Right. <clears throat> came out of my brain. So let me get the words in front of me so I don't lose my way, please. <clears throat> okay, so there's a controversy in Land of Odin, whether it's 1,000 or 10,000 miles. What do you think? I think based on my experience and the words written in front of me, it's 1,000 miles. All righty then, then that's what it is today. That's what okay. I remember too, from it being the first song I learned to play on the guitar in 1969 or something. Yeah, if 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 I had thought about it, I would bring out my guitar, but I didn't, so I'll just spew it. In the land of Odin, there stands a mountain, one thousand miles in the air. From edge to edge, this mountain measures 1,000 miles. Little bird comes a winging once every million years or so, sharpens his beak on that mountain and swiftly disappears. And when that mountain has worn away, this to eternity shall be as one single day. In the land of Odin, there stands a mountain 1,000 miles in the air. From edge to edge, this mountain measures 1,000 miles square. That was yeah. nice. Bravo. So good. What a great song to end with. That's Beautiful. a good ear. Kitty, stop lovely. it. Booger, stop it. Very lovely. That is Kitty. a great song. Haunting. <laughs> Stop it. It's against the law to, to sharpen your claws on the chair. And yet, she's a lawbreaker. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Give her like, a ticket. I'm, I'm totally Give innocent. Give her a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> what? All right, I gotta go, I gotta well, go try to walk a horse with my sprained ankle. Mwah. Bless you guys. You have a sprained yes, ankle? Yes, I sprained my ankle in the mud because oh. if you don't walk the horse before 4.30, it's pitch dark now in the islands. And yeah. I was in a bit of a hurry and I just went like that with it. And uh, yeah, it's kind of dumb. But hey, we do what we can do. Love you guys. Love you, Bill yeah. and Mark. Bye. Bye. See you next week. See you next week, Thank everybody. Yep. Hope to see everyone if you can make it yes. next week. And I look forward we'll to it. Thank you. Get some other Listen. people in. Yeah, Kim, it's so nice to and see happy you. Happy Advent if you got stuff. Oh, nice. Bye bye. We love yeah. the nurses. Bye. Bye. bye bye. Thanks for coming, Mom and Dad. Oh, yeah. Nice bye, to see Mom you. And Dad. Bye bye. Beautiful. And John, I'm glad you came again. Bisous.